So, do you do you do you So today, uh, I'm going to talk about the right hand. Um, I think for a lot of people, when they first come to the lute, they say, like, why did you go? Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to give Kayleen a second to get herself together. There we go. Okay. Are we, are we good? Are we good? Can I continue? Hey, I've only been up since five. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, All right. Are you ready? <laughs> See, this is what happens when the accompanist gets a moment to shine. The singer just laughs through it all. So, I'm just going to talk about right hand technique. Right hand technique. So, when we first approach the lute, we often think, okay, what is the correct technique? And I hear this a lot. What is lute technique? Um, and I think the biggest thing I want to get across in this video is that you probably need to think about techniques, not technique. Um, and there's a lot of evidence to indicate that players in the 16th century were very experimental, and early 17th century, were very experimental, um, and tried all sorts of different things. They weren't, there wasn't like one right way to do things. Um, and it's gonna depend on the context and the, your own body, what sort of right hand mm -hmm. technique you end up choosing. And I think, you know, Kayleen has noticed this with singing, is that sometimes Absolutely. you need different techniques for different things. Yes. So what a lot of people will notice when they first uh, come to the lute is they'll, they'll learn the most common sort of right hand technique, which is thumb under. And all that means is that you're placing your pinky on the soundboard. She's doing a great imitation <laughs> here with <laughs> I don't know if that's a great, don't look at her. So, <laughs> so you'll see many, many players use the thumb under technique. And the thumb under technique was without a doubt the most dominant 16th century lute right hand technique. And all that means is that the plucks are occurring with the thumb going into the palm and then the index finger coming up. And I will do a video in the future about accent based fingerings. Um, so that you can learn the order that you should pluck with. But the basic idea is that the thumb goes into the pocket and the index finger comes up. And you'll see kind of two schools of thought, one where the hand is a little bit higher or closer to the bridge, um, or one where the arm is actually, I'll have to reposition myself a little bit, a little more under the instrument like this. So some people enjoy playing that way. Um, and I think it's great to look at two primary sources, which I'll, I'll put in the description below, kind of toward the end of the 16th and beginning of the 17th century. And one is Thomas Robinson's School of Music, and the other one is Robert Dolan's Variety of Lute Lessons. And what's interesting about these two sources is the Thomas Robinson describes the thumb under technique, and the Robert and John Dolan variety of lute lessons talks about another possibility. And this is something that became more popular toward the end of the 16th century and beginning of the 17th century, which is a thumb out technique, which is a lot more similar to modern classical guitar technique. So what you noticed before when I was doing the thumb under is the thumb goes hiding into the pocket there. For thumb out, you'll actually put your thumb out like this, and you'll notice the pinky is resting just like with thumb under. Uh, 
And what's interesting about this is you've got a couple of options and the variety of loop lessons has this translation by a loop player from the continent named Bassard. And Bassard does this great treatise and John Dolan, as many of you may know, never got to write his loop book, but he does endorse this technique. So what they describe is a thumb out technique where you can either do 16th note runs still with the thumb in the index, like with thumb under, but with the thumb out, like this, or you can use the middle and index finger, the middle finger taking the place of the thumb. And one really cool thing that is mentioned in this treatise is that... It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard? Yeah, I can't do it. Can't do? Oh, the M and I. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? I guess for classical guitar players, it's much more na natural because you're used to like <laughs> using your fingers like that. Um, but one cool thing that's mentioned in the Bassard is that it depends on the size and shape of your thumb. So if you have a small thumb, you may find that the thumb under technique works better for you. If you have a large thumb, and mine's very, very flexible and my fingers tend to flex, so it gives me some trouble with thumb under technique, you may find that thumb out is better for uh, your playing. So I'll probably go into more depth with <laughs> each of these techniques down the road in future videos, but I just want to like throw out this idea that there are, are many techniques, and as players, we should explore and experiment. Just like vocalists should explore and experiment with color and different mm -hmm. techniques, we need to get away from this idea of the right technique. It's so easy with YouTube and modern technology. Well, that's what such and such yeah. does, so I have to do that. Mm -hmm. And we're all built differently. Uh, the repertoire all calls for different things. And so this is really just a, a, a sort of um, call to experiment. So what I hope is that people will put comments uh, in this video and maybe ask some questions and things like that. But uh, understand that what works for me is not necessarily going to work for you and vice versa. And you should go around, read as many sources, play with different positions. Don't listen to that junk about like, oh, your hand has to be this close to the bridge or your hand has to be this close. They're all different. All, you know, all the instruments are different. I pick up one loop, my hand is here. I pick up another loop, it's over here. But use your ears. I think that's the main thing. It's kind so, of like singing in different spaces, I guess. Yeah, too. I don't understand. People are like worried about the way they look instead of the way they sound. So mm -hmm. I think that's my, my rant for today. <laughs> Until next time. Until next time. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Bye. Bye. Oh, well. Well. <laughs> the strings with the right hand. Now it's important to remember if you're left-handed, you can pluck with your left hand, or you can learn to use your right hand with your plucking. Um, but it can go either way. Well, not this instrument because of oh. the, the strings, but I suppose you could order from a luthier a, a left-handed Could you just loop. restring it? Uh, no, because of the grooves. Oh. On the nut. Yeah, unfortunately. I you have to kind of get it, yeah, you learn something every day about plucking.